Hola, my name is Mary and I'm one of the educators here at the Rockwell Museum in Corning, New York. And we've created a series of videos so you can learn more about Dia de los Muertos, or the Day of the Dead. If you're not familiar with Dia de los Muertos, it's a day of celebration, particularly for people in Mexico, Central America, and Mexican Americans living in the United States. And today it has become very popular with Latinx living in the United States. So it's a day to honor and commemorate family and friends who have died, and also to welcome the return of their spirits each year. And you know, when we lose somebody we love, we always want a way to honor and remember them. And you know, art is a beautiful and tangible way to do that. So I have two artworks that I would like to share with you that are really great examples of how artists remember family and remember important people in their art. So I hope you'll join me. Well, this is the first artwork I wanted to share with you, and it's by a Native American artist named Judith Lowry. And Judith's ancestry is Maidu and Pitt River. And the name of this painting is Family Loves Unbreakable Heaven, and she painted this in 1995. You may notice that this painting is a little unusual because there are three different panels, each one its own painting, but together they make the entire image. And so we call this a triptych. And there's a lot to take in with this painting, so just take a minute with me and look at it. And you know, when you look at details in a painting, you can begin to read it and start getting ideas about the story that the artist is trying to tell. So the first time that I saw this painting by Judith Lowry, I really noticed the tree ornaments that you see scattered across the bottom of the painting. Then my eye was drawn to the stars that are hanging in the sky. And then I noticed how festive the palm trees look with the red and green. And so I definitely got the feeling that this must be about Christmas. And then the next thing I did is I looked at the figures in the painting and I noticed the two adults here. And then I noticed the young boy and the young girl. And then I concluded that this must be about family. Well, you know what? It is about family, and it's about Judith Lowry, the artist's family. And actually, and to the panel to your left, this is a self-portrait of Judith Lowry. And she is remembering a Christmas when she was a young girl when her family was in Germany because her father was a colonel in the army, and he was stationed there. And her mom and dad gave her little brother this outfit, and she describes it as an Indian outfit. And her little brother was very proud, and he was dancing around, and he was very excited. And you see the dad here with the camera, and he's taking home movies of this fun, festive event. And Judith is playing the drum, but she's not really a part of the dance, but she's more an observer. And as she was watching her brother dance, she noticed something. She looked at her brother, and then she looked at her dad, and she said, oh my gosh, my little brother looks like my father, who's Native American with his darker skin and dark hair, and I look like my mother with my fair skin and lighter hair, and my mother is Australian. And so it was the first time she realized that her family was different, as she describes it. And she realized that she was from a biracial family. Now, Judith explores a lot of different concepts, and there's a lot of layers to this painting. She addresses cultural issues, current issues, ideas of identity. But what I'd like you to focus on is the fact that this was an important moment in her life and remembering time with family. 
And I want to direct your attention to Judith's mother right here. Because as you look at the other figures, the dad, the brother, although he's a bit brightly colored, if you look at the details and you look at Judith, her mother is much more detailed. And she's this beautiful bright yellow dress really captures your attention. So she really is the focus of this painting. So as you look more closely, you'll notice all the details that Judith included in this rendering of her mother. You notice the concho belt and the beautiful jewelry that she's wearing and how beautifully her hair is and her skin is very luminous. And so a lot more detail to her mother than the other characters in her family. But then you also start to notice some other details. Like if you look at Judith's mother's head, above her, it looks like she has a halo around her head. And that's something you often see in Renaissance paintings or in images that show saints, someone who is not of this world. And then we also look at her wrap around her arms. It's very gauzy and it looks shimmery and again, kind of otherworldly. And look at her shoes. You also notice that there are wings on her shoes. So it suggests that maybe Judith's mother wasn't alive when she painted this image. And that is in fact the truth. Her mother had passed away. So this painting is not only about this moment that she realized she was from a biracial family, but it's also to honor her mother who had passed away. So she is remembering very fondly her family and her mother. So thank you for looking at this first artwork with me. And so now what I'd like to do is share with you the second artwork that I would like to look at with you. So this is the second artwork that I wanted to share with you. It's very different than the two-dimensional painting by Judith Lowry that we just looked at. This is a ceramic vessel, so it's fired clay. And this is by a Native American artist by the name of Diego Romero, who's from the Cochiti Pueblo. And as I mentioned earlier with the Judith Lowry, if we look at details, we can tell a lot about what the particular art object is about. So actually the title of this piece is right on this ceramic vessel. So it says, never forget Jim Thorpe, all American. And this vessel was completed in 2000 by Diego Romero. And as we look at the details, we can see a picture of Jim Thorpe right on the front of this vessel. And as I look at it, I can see that he was a football player. And I say was because when I look at the uniform that he's wearing, it's definitely not the kind of football uniform people wear today. So I can tell he was a football player from some time ago. And then I also notice this very large football that's right on the top, which acts as a handle for this vessel. So obviously the artist wants us to know that football was very much a part of Jim Thorpe's life. Let me tell you a little bit more about Jim Thorpe. He was from the Sac and Fox Nation, and he is considered one of the greatest athletes and most versatile of the 20th century. He played basketball, baseball, and football, and he was inducted in the National Football League Hall of Fame. He also was the first Native American to win gold medals at the Olympic Games in Sweden in 1912. The sad part is a year later, he was stripped of those medals because it was determined that he played two seasons of pro baseball, which was against the amateurism rules at the time. The good news is Jim Thorpe was rewarded by the International Olympic Committee his medals but it was almost 30 years after his death, and that was of, of great sadness to him, but it's great that he was reinstated. And so Diego Romero wanted to remember this Native American hero by creating and commemorating his life 
with this vessel. Now the other interesting thing to look at is Romero's choice to use a ceramic vessel. And if you look at the form of this, it actually is inspired by Greek pottery. It also has the shape of an urn that you would put human cremains in. So it's very fitting as a commemorative piece for Jim Thorpe. And the other thing to think about is it was the Greeks that started the Olympics. So a very interesting choice of medium and style that he used. So the connection between the Judith Lowry piece, the painting, Family Loves Unbreakable Heaven, and Diego Romero, is their, their artwork is about honoring and remembering loved ones and important people through art. And Dia de los Muertos is all about remembering and commemorating loved ones and important people. So you might want to think about how you commemorate and honor family members, people you cared about, even pets. You might use artwork, you might write. So think about ways that you might like to express that honor and remembrance. And also, I encourage you to look at the other videos and resources that we have online because Dia de los Muertos has such rich history, ritual, ceremony, music, and food. There's so much to learn about this very rich and ancient holiday. And the other thing is, please come and visit the museum in Corning, New York, if you can. Thank you.